Hello everyone, Kyle here, back with another tutorial for art, actually, and the Godot game engine. What I'm hoping to do today is show you how to create isometric tiles for your games and incorporate them into the Godot game engine. For some reason, it's sort of mystifying as to how to actually create isometric art, but it's actually not that difficult. You just have to be very precise. And I looked for a bunch of tutorials uh, on creating isometric art and found almost none, I think in fact none that created in Asaprite. And since it's such a nice little piece of pixel-based software, I thought I would create mine in that. And then you can see how to do it. It's very straightforward. And other uh, tutorials show you how to do it in a very complicated way. I don't know why that's the case. It doesn't matter. The important part is, let me show you how to do it in Asaprite, very cleanly. Now the first thing, and the most important to be perfectly honest, that you need to recognize, if you look down here, the size of my canvas, it's the second value from the left, is 128 by 64. Your canvas doesn't have to be that size, but it has to adhere to a very specific pixel ratio. It has to be twice as wide as it is tall. Now, there can be some adjustments, and I'll show you how to do that, but you always should be starting off with something twice as wide as it is tall. That will pretty much always be what you're looking for. All right, and one thing to note, too, we're going to zoom in a bit here and get us some... Uh, extra space at the bottom, is you pretty much don't ever want to use the line tool. Now that sounds really bad. I'm going to pick a color here that's like pretty close to purple and black. But what you can see with the line tool is if we come to the middle here, it always seems to get things a little bit weird. And if we zoom way in, we can see right here, one, two, three, four, five. This thing is five wide, this one, two, three, four, is four wide, and then this one is only three wide. It could have done this in a relatively even tiling of all fours. It just decided for some reason not to. So we don't actually want to use the line tool for this. We simply want to use uh, the pen tool, the pencil tool, whatever it's called, pencil tool. And you could also use the line tool in a different way. Let me just show how to do it. Basically, since we have uh, 128 pixels divided by 2, since you're only drawing, if you're smart about it, you're only drawing one side of it, um, you can hit the little mirroring tool for horizontal symmetry. Um, you can also actually hit the vertical one. That will also help a little bit in the future. Basically, what you're doing here is you're wanting to make the rise over run of this line exactly the same for every single piece of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start one below this line and we're just going to come, I've got the line, we'll come over four, so one, two, three, four. And we're going to do the exact same thing here, one, two, three, four. And we're just going to keep doing this. I'm going to speed up for this part because it's boring. Okay, and now that we're done with actually defining this, you can see it already is starting to look like an isometric tile. As you change the values, so if you went 2 and 1, for example, instead, you'd have more of these black lines. It would be a little bit finer. It would also be taller, and the reason is you can move more up per value right. So if you think about it this way, the slope is 1 half. That is more... Uh, more angled than one fourth because it's a higher value. Okay, uh, the thing to note here too is let's take these off for now. These things are separate because of the way that the tooling works. It's not really our fault, it just happened. We don't want that. We actually want them to be together. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this bottom part completely and I'm just going to move it up one pixel. Now we've got it so that these overlap. It looks good, looks solid. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire piece of the top of our tile here. I'm just going to move it up. 
Um, we can use any amount of space below this and it'll look pretty good. Um, how we want to do that is we actually want to select just the bottom part here, including those little tips that we had. Copy it and paste it. And now we just want to move it down. We should move this to be however many pixels we want this bottom to be. Since we're 64 high, each of these big bricks is 16 pixels. So if we're one above it, that's actually 15. So let's go down to, let's see here. If we go down to here, this would be one plus that. So it's back to um, 16 plus two, because this would be 16, this would be 16. So now we have two extra pixels in between. That makes it uh, 18. Let's go here. And if we see, let's just make sure selection oh actually sorry we want to select from here to here yeah it's 21 let's move this up one so that we get it it's 20 I must have, oh yeah I miscounted there's the extra two and there's the one and we're not including the bottom part so that's why it's uh, exactly right this should be 24 by 20 yes exactly okay so that's how you can kind of uh, get some values later. We're going to go ahead and um, draw in our side lines now. If we just take the line tool, it's good at doing very straight lines, but that's about it. So we draw in our side lines. Now you'll note, because we're one pixel wide for our line here, in the center, if we want to put a center piece here, the center line, we actually would have to make it too thick. And it, it looks a little weird. I'm just going to select a side. And I'll put one in. And that's going to correspond to whichever side has more shadow. I'll get into that in just a little bit. Let's make this tile just a simple grass tile. I'm going to select a green. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. This is a little bit uh, a little bit light for my tastes. I'm just going to do something like this. Going to increase the saturation and decrease the value a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. It's a nice green. Good dark green for us. And now I'm going to select something that's like brown. I'm going to actually just manually pick it here. What we end up needing to do a little bit is move it a little bit to the right on the hue and then darken it a bit here. I want this to be the value for the right. So if you look at that, that's a really nice dark hue. And I, I like having that dark. And the reason you do what I'm going to do next we're going to lighten this by increasing the value and decreasing the saturation just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. What this does is it makes it look like the light is coming from the left. You could pick the other way if you wanted. I prefer to put this line on this side, on whichever side is darker. Not for any reason, I just think it looks better. But ultimately, you want these to be two different colors. Actually, I'm even going to make this a little bit lighter because I don't like how dark that is. There we go. That looks a little bit more like there's light coming from the side. If we zoom out a bit, it looks pretty good. You can kind of tell the difference between the two sides. The top looks good. And there's going to be some values that we need to store from this. So let me do this. I'm going to show you how to get the exact size you need for the tile in Godot to incorporate isometric views. So first you start selecting, you come to the fourth pixel from the right. Now that sounds weird, let me explain it. And you go one above the black. Now the reason you do this is on top, this takes into account the border already. And we don't need to take it into account again down here. Similarly, on the right, that border is already taken care of on the left by those four pixels. So this ends up being the exact height and width that we need for our tile in Godot when we set it for isometric. So let's remember that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. You can see I've got a little uh, proof of concept here. I'm just going to save it as um, we've got ground isometric tile already. I'll just make it two. So you can see that I am doing exactly what I'm saying. Actually, let me put this up in my little temp folder here. I'll just name the same thing. It's fine. 
And now we're going to move over to Godot. This is actually almost done. I forgot to do one little thing here. I'm going to select this and I'm going to crop my tile to look like that. And that's just to make it a little bit easier. It cleans up a little bit better. So now we've got 128 by 51. That's going to be our snap. And let's just select what we had before so that we don't forget. Uh, that was one too many. I know because I remember the value. But there we go. 124 by 30. That's right. Okay, let's go into Godot. Uh, the only thing I have here set up is a camera with uh, Chris Bradfield's, or Kids Can't Code is his name, um, touch script. And I've turned on emulate touch for mouse click. And the only thing I've done to change this thing, in this case, uh, there actually are two things. Mostly I've made it the negative of the event.relative and I've rotated it based on the camera rotation. This makes it so if you ever have a camera that uh, rotates, this will sort of make the dragging look a lot better than it actually is. Um, actually, not, not the better than it is. It'll make the dragging work. Without the rotation, uh, you actually don't get the camera to work correctly because of the way that the relative is set up. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new child. I'm going to add a tile map. Let's get this set up properly. We're going to switch to isometric first. And you can see it looks a little weird. It kind of turned everything. We're going to make a new tile set. Remember our cell size that we talked about before? It was 130. Is that it? This is why I always have it selected. No, 124 by 30, excuse me. Okay, and now let's go into our actual tile set. We're going to go ahead and click Add. The one that I've actually created this time is in my temp folder, so it's right there. We'll add that, and if you come into uh, and hit New Single Tile, click that. You can see I've already got it set up. This is the exact size for the snap options as the size of this entire tile in ASAP. So 128 by 51. And the reason for that is anything else here will get this slightly cut off. But you want it to be exactly whatever this thing crops to when you have it. If you leave in the space at the bottom, that's actually fine. Nothing will break in Godot. I just prefer to keep it like this. Just make sure that when you select it, you select only this portion as well in the actual sprite um, selection in the tile set. So you'll have a little bit of extra space if we had left it. We don't want that. We just want to leave it as is. So as you can see, I'll just zoom in a bit. This accounts for the exact outside of the tile everywhere. And that's why we have the step set that way. So if we click on the tile set now, we have our little tile set here. Let's just have a little guide. We can actually start playing with it. And the nice thing is, it looks super good. I did almost nothing. And it's, it's so easy that in the future, if I wanted to add things like a water tile or uh, a patch of dirt, anything like that, I can just take that exact thing that I made here and recolor it. And there's literally no, no difficulty here. Everything is exactly the same. You just add it here. There is a way to do auto tiling with this, but it's extremely sort of painful. And the reason is Godot's matching system internally it was not built for that. It wasn't built for isometric tiling for when doing auto tiling. So, that's okay. We don't need auto tiling here. Usually these maps uh, kind of are a lot simpler. And yeah, that is actually about it. Let me show you what it actually looks like. Save this scene. I'm just going to save it over top of this one because we don't need it. And you can see how beautiful that looks. Everything looks exactly right. Everything is lined up. Everything makes complete sense, and you should have no issues whatsoever now building your isometric art. You can see how the light looks, looks really good. 
You can change the uh, height of your camera if you want so that things fit a little bit better, but otherwise, yeah, this is how you do it. So, uh, I'm not going to show you anything else in this video. This was meant to be just pretty much for this, and hopefully that was helpful to some of you. I want to thank Kids Can't Code or Chris Bradfield, as well as you Heart Beast, Benjamin Anderson, and Ben helped me on this pretty considerably, so I appreciate that. He's the one who figured out how to do the sizing exactly right, and pretty much how to draw the tiles also. And yeah, I think that's where we're going to call it today. Uh, I hope you have a, have a good one, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.